Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is the LG G3, and it has a Quad HD display, which means it's rocking a 2560 by 1440 resolution. If your mind isn't blown yet, let me give you some perspective. Let me take you back a few years to the iPhone 3GS. This was Apple's flagship in 2009, and it had a three and a half inch display at a resolution of 320 by 480, giving it a pixel density of 165 pixels per inch. And it looked pretty good. It looked decently sharp and Apple thought it was good. But the next year, Apple released the iPhone 4 and one of its biggest named features, which still gets name dropped all the time now, is the Retina display. It's the highest resolution display ever built into a phone. At 326 pixels per inch, you get four times the pixels as before. So instead of the fuzziness of individual pixels, you get smooth, continuous shapes and tone. You have something that looks to your eye like you're holding a printed page in your hand. And the level of fine detail in images is just incredible. So the iPhone 4 they were talking about still has a three and a half inch display, but now has a resolution of 640 by 960, which gives it a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. So at that point you figure that's as high as we're gonna go, right? Like that's as much as we need. Anything north of 300 pixels per inch is so sharp that you literally cannot see fuzziness. You cannot discern individual pixels on the display at a normal viewing distance or even at a super close viewing distance. But no, of course we didn't stop there. We've since then gotten 1280 by 720 displays, 1920 by 1080 displays, and now panels 2560 by 1440 in a smartphone. Obviously it's much bigger, it's a 5.5 inch screen now, but the sharpness at over 500 PPI is crazy. But if everything north of 300 pixels per inch is the same, then why even bother with Quad HD? Why would you, I mean, surely it's gonna hit battery life, right? It's gonna stress your graphics extra. It might kind of disturb the performance of the phone. Well, I hope to find out exactly how much this phone's display affects its performance in the full review. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already to see that full review when it comes out. That button is below somewhere, it's red. Uh, but until then, this video is just gonna be taking a look at the quality difference to see if there's really a difference between this Quad HD display and some others. So go ahead and use the gear in the bottom right hand corner of the video to change this to 4K or 1440p or whatever highest resolution you can watch it in and full screen it. Because even if you don't have a 4K display, YouTube streams these high resolution videos at higher bit rates. So the clarity is improved anyway. So here is the new OS X Yosemite 5K wallpaper. It's a really high resolution, higher than any other display I have. And here is that wallpaper on the iPhone 5S. So it's a four inch display at 326 pixels per inch. And you can see it looks pretty good. It's pretty crisp. And from a regular viewing distance, there are absolutely no problems. And like we said, Apple has boasted about this 326 pixels per inch a lot. And that's what they call a retina display. So now here it is on the HTC One M8. This is a much larger five inch display coming in at 1920 by 1080, which gives it a pixel density of 441 pixels per inch. And it seems like a noticeable improvement actually, which most would say, you know, it's crystal clear, you know, not a pixel in sight, a little bit better and probably more enjoyable of a viewing experience because of the larger display. But again, this is 441 pixels per inch. And lastly, here it is on the LG G3, which like we said is a new 5.5 inch quad HD display coming in at 534 pixels per inch. And I mean, come on, that's ridiculously sharp. And whether or not you can see it though, Technically, yes, there is actually a difference in clarity only because we're using an image here that's of a high enough resolution. Uh, here's another super high res image on all three displays. And I gotta say, while they all look great, you really couldn't tell the difference unless you're holding them side by side or comparing them. Of course, there are other things that make a good display like color accuracy and viewing angles, and obviously the size of the panel, the bezels that surround it, uh, and there's a ton of stuff that goes into making a good smartphone display. But really the bottom line here is that it's actually kind of hard to tell the difference between Quad HD and even 1080p unless you're looking for the difference or holding them up side by side like we have in this 4K video. And since every app on your phone is basically scaled to 1080p right now, you're not going to notice much of the benefits or advantages of having the super high res display for now. I mean, text will definitely be sharper and wallpapers will look awesome and all of LG's assets, like I've said, their icons are great, but third party stuff, I mean, their icons still aren't super high resolution and apps 
don't really take advantage of all those extra pixels yet. The YouTube app on Android still only streams at a highest quality of 720p, not even 1080p. So really, the benefits are limited, but like I said, that's for now. It makes a much bigger difference on bigger panels like computer monitors and TVs to have that higher resolution, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate a baller display in a smartphone. And while it's not necessarily worth it now, it sure will be in maybe one or two years when every smartphone is Quad HD. So there you go, that's what it looks like to have the Quad HD display on the LG G3. Again, the full review of this phone is in the works as I put it through its paces, so that's coming soon enough, and I can't wait to show you guys the other stuff I'm working on too. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.